Hello and welcome to Still Behind the Bench. My name is Adam and on this channel I will attempt to describe the science behind distilling spirits in a more technical way. Hopefully it'll whet your appetite, learn more, and teach you enough so that you're more self-sufficient. So for this video I'm going to talk tips for finding new information. So let's get started. Okay, so I imagine you come to my YouTube channel to find new information, and so I'm probably shooting myself in the foot here by sharing how I personally find new information, but I do think we should all know how, how to do this, you know, what these techniques I use are. So first I'm going to be showing you Google Scholar here. It's pretty simple, it's just like Google search, but in this case it finds specifically books, patents, and research studies related to the words you've typed in. So in this case, the first thing I typed in was distilling whiskey, whiskey with an E, because if you know, if you just put in a Y, it will find different things. So spelling is important here. And in this case, I'm going to be showing you patents and books first before I get to research study. In this case, I wanted to find some old things. So I clicked custom range and I put in 1600 to 1900. So it's only going to find patents and books that were published between the year 1600 and 1900. And I also made sure to check off include patents and make sure that include citations was unchecked. There's a lot of stuff that it'll show you here. There's 436 results here alone, just for distilling whiskey with an E. You get rid of the E and you'll find some other amount. You put in just whiskey and you'll find even more. So here's an example. A textbook of the science of brewing by Edward Ralph Moritz and George Harris Morris, a course of six lectures written in, or published at least in 1891. There are 500 odd pages. You know, this is for brewing beer, but you know, when we're distilling, we're essentially making a beer up until we get to the point at which they would add the hops. But you can download this book for free and you might be able to find some interesting new recipes or something in this book. So, you know, come up here, download PDF, save it to your computer, move on to try and find another book or patent or whatever, right? What else do we have here? Um, a lecture on malt liquor, the development of the whiskey trust. Do we have any more? Let's see. Secrets of the, the great whiskey ring. So it's probably written by a guy who was a part of this great whiskey ring textbook on the science of brewing. That's the one I just showed you, but yeah, you can find some pretty fascinating things in here. So, so before I decided to do this, this video. I decided to do it a couple weeks ago because I had originally made it for Patreons. As I'm moving content from Patreon exclusive only to this, I sort of forgot about this video. And then a couple weeks ago, I discovered the term Mountain Dew while searching Scotch whiskey. And at the time, I didn't know that Mountain Dew was actually a term for Scottish Highland moonshine. So, you know, I read that. I was actually reading a, a book full of short stories. And yeah, one of them kept mentioning Mountain Dew. And I was like, what, what, what are they talking about? So after going down the rabbit hole and eventually ending up in a dictionary meant specifically for the Scottish language, I found out that they meant it, it was Highland Moonshine. So when I found that out, I was like, you know, if I was ever to start up a craft distillery, would I have the balls to create a, a whiskey, say a peated whiskey, and call it Highland Mountain Dew? And, you know, risk getting sued by both Pepsi and the Scottish Whiskey Association. Because I know the SWA would definitely come after you if you use the word Highland in your spirit. They will do that. They have already done that before. At least in Canada they have. I don't know if I'd be able to do it. But at the same time, you know, it's kind of fun to think about poking the bear. But yeah, so old books, Old patents. Let's look at some of the old patents. So, you know, some of them are really simple. We can sort of see how this might have, this looks like a simple plated still with a single bubble cap, right? So you got your down comer, down comer, down comer, and then these are like your bubble caps, right? This one's from 1854. I haven't read the description of this, mostly because I don't find this, this specific design all that interesting. But then you look at something like this and you're like, what the hell is this? And I started to read the description but it seems like Mr. D. Green described it to a lawyer and then the lawyer wrote it down and it doesn't really, it's kind of hard to decipher. I mean, I can sort of figure out how this is going to work, but it's a pretty complex thing with not the greatest diagram of it. Luckily, it expired in 1885. So if you want to build this still, you can. Here's the uh, the little description of it. And you can just download these as a PDF, right? But yeah, there's ton. Oh, Doobie Green. Nice name. 
But yeah, there are tons, tons and tons of patents like this with these crazy designs for stills and all kinds of things that expired, you know, over a century ago. And, you know, makes me wish I had won the lottery so I could build these things and see how they worked. But the next thing I'm going to show you is the actual more modern studies. So a lot of the time I'll type in something like whiskey spirits or rum or, or gin or whatever, just to start off. And then as I'm clicking through, I might find specific words. And again, this is spelling dependent so whiskey without an e and whiskey with an e will show you different things the point of showing this to you is you know you may click on a study and this was a free example but say you clicked on this study and all you get is the abstract and you're like wow that's fascinating i want to read it but you don't have the ability to download it so all the free ones here i'm going to link in the description just imagine this wasn't free so what you do is in this case, scientific report, the journal Nature, click cite this article. And what you wanna find here is the DOI number. You'll copy this. If you're on Science Direct, which is owned by Wiley, I think, or it might be El Selvia owns this one. You know, the DOI is here. So you can just right click and copy that. Uh, Royal Society of Chemistry, your DOI is up here. Right click and copy that. And in all the cases, you know, Wiley, you can just right click copy here. Here's the study that I used for that video on why you should have copper in your still. It's free. Again, the DOI link right here. Here's another study, another free one. DOI is right here. MDPI usually has free studies, but not always. So what you'll do, so I'll use this, the copper one. Copy your link. You come over here. I already have something in there. Oh, it's the same one. Paste the link in there. You click open and then boom, this is what you get. Little description of the title and the DOI number and the authors, and then you get the study itself. So this is this is a free study, but even if it wasn't free, you'd still get access to the study. That's what this SciHub website is. Pretty much any study, any DOI link you throw in there is going to come up with a study. Not always, but most of the time it will. But there's a very big exception to that, and it's studies published after February 2021. And that's because sometime at the end of January, starting of February in 2021, Alexandra, the woman who runs SciHub, was taken to court in India and the court asked her to stop updating the website while the case is ongoing. And as a, you know, a show of good faith, she decided to stop updating the website. Studies after February 2021 typically won't show up on there, at least not yet. Hopefully she wins the lawsuit and she can continue to keep uploading papers to the website. But yeah, that's how I find my studies and learn sort of the most up-to-date science in every aspect of the, the professional commercial spirits world. But it does suck that some of these studies you can't read, like whiskey analysis, see, 2022. There's one on Japanese whiskey I really wanna read. See, here's another one, 2022. So for these ones that are, at, that are published after February, 2021, I just bookmark them. Right, so here's another one. Scotch whiskey, raw material selection and processing. Actually, I already showed that one. Yeah, right here. I just bookmark them and then, you know, hopefully sometime in the future, I'll be able to go through SciHub to read them. Some of them you can't get a DOI number for. So this is a good example, JSTOR. Sometimes you're able to read them for free. Like even if it doesn't look like you can read it for free, JSTOR offers 100 articles per month for free. You have to sign up with an account. I don't have an account, but yeah, sometimes you won't be able to find a DOI number because there is no DOI number. And in that case, you're just out of luck. And it's happened to me quite a few times. So the last thing I wanted to show you was LibGen. So LibGen, Library Genesis, is sort of the sci-hub, but of the book world. So writing a book takes a lot of effort and money. So I say, if you can afford to buy the book, then just buy the book. But if you don't have money, then LibGen is the place to come. You know, even if you just want to search for random books with a certain word in it, you can, or you can put in a specific title. But here's an example, whiskey, with an E, comes up with 115 books, all on whiskey, all pretty modern. And download them as a whole bunch of different formats, PDFs, EPUBs, Mobi. I think I saw AZW3 in there, which is Amazon's file format. Yeah, here's one, AZW3. You know, if you can only read PDF and EPUB files, there's an application you can download, Caliber, the ebook manager. I use this to sideload ebooks into my e my uh, e ink e reader, but it also has a conversion function in it. So you know, you can download a Mobi file or an AZW3 and convert it into an EPUB or convert it into a PDF if you you know 
you want it in one of those formats. So this is how I find new information using these sources. Mostly it's Google Scholar finding old books or studies and then using Sci-Hub to download them or LibGen and then just doing a lot of reading. And I find Google Scholar is a really good source, especially if you want to find and I, I think I said this before, but if not, if you want to find old recipes for things, old gin recipes, absinthe, a lot of liqueurs, there are a lot of old books with recipes uh, essentially been lost to time and nobody's really using them anymore. Or they're using old processes that nobody's using anymore. So that's it for this video. I hope you learned something. Please click like and subscribe if you want to learn more. Check out the Patreon or the PayPal donation link if you want to help out the channel. No pressure though. And have a great week.